Today we're going to take a look at the 2022 Honda Ruckus. We'll talk about where this 49cc scooter fits in the Honda's current scooter model lineup, and we'll also go over some of its specs and features, what changed for 2022, plus we'll start it up for you so you can hear what it sounds like in stock form. And if you guys find any info in this video helpful, or you just like scooters in general and want to show your support for the time spent making this video, please take a second and hit the like button for YouTube's algorithm. Dropping a like and commenting below helps more than you guys know, and I really appreciate it. Now, where does the Ruckus fit in Honda's current scooter model lineup? At the moment, Honda only makes four scooter models for the U.S. market. Now, they make a million different models for other markets around the world, but for us, it's just these four. And first up is the Metropolitan, sharing the same engine size, 49cc's, as the Ruckus, but coming in slightly cheaper at $24.99 for the 2022 model year. Then we have the Ruckus at $27.99, followed up by the 2022 ADV 150 at $42.99, and last but not least, you have the 2021 PCX 160 at $37.99. But keep in mind, Honda isn't done with their 2022 model announcements, so this list will change. This is just what's available right now. And on that note, keep an eye out at HondaProKevin.com and my social media link below for the latest sneak peek info and releases from Honda. I want to take a quick second and say thank you to Southern Honda Power Sports for opening their doors to me and allowing me to come pick through their inventory for these videos. They are a massive Honda Power Sports dealer here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, with tons of inventory from new Hondas to used Harleys and everything in between that they sell to people from all over the USA. So check out the link in the description below and head over to their website to see if they can save you some money on your next toy. And now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump into a little bit more info on the Ruckus. The Honda didn't build a 2021 Ruckus, so surely we got some big new upgrades during its hiatus right? Nope. Now what did Honda really change for 2022? Hold on to your seat. We have three, yes, three new color options. Oh my god! Wow! Of course I'm just messing around. If it doesn't make business sense for them to redesign it and add new features, then so be it. But I am still blown away by the fact that it still has a carburetor in 2022. I'm not knocking it though, the package works perfectly and that's all you can ask for. Now your three new color options for this year are white and metallic blue, followed up by midnight blue and tan, and the last one Honda just calls gray. Now with the Ruckus you don't have any model options or variations to choose from like ABS, so your MSRP across the board for all colors is $27.99. Now let's get to a few numbers around the bike. The Ruckus has a curb weight of 194 pounds, making it 15 pounds heavier than the Metropolitan. It also has a 28.9 inch seat height, making it about a half an inch taller than the Metropolitan. And the Ruckus has a 1.3 gallon fuel tank, and Honda rates it at 114 miles per gallon, which puts you around the 140-ish mile mark before you're walking. And it has 5.7 inches of ground clearance, and it's 73.2 inches long, and 28.9 inches wide with a maximum weight capacity of 220 pounds. And next up, we'll get to the engine. The Ruckus has a 49cc four-stroke overhead cam, two-valve liquid-cooled engine with a slightly different bore and stroke than the Metropolitan, coming in at 37.8 by 44 millimeters and an 11 9 to 1 compression ratio. Now, when it comes to induction, it isn't fuel injected like the rest of Honda's models. This has an 18 millimeter constant velocity carburetor with an automatic choke. Is that a bad thing? Of course not. Honda's been doing carbs for a few years now, so they kind of know what they're doing, but it's something you should be aware of when shopping. Another thing to be aware of is maintenance. This engine has a slightly different maintenance schedule than the Metropolitan, Honda's other 49cc scooter. The Ruckus's first service is due at 600 miles, and then every 2,500 miles for oil changes and valve inspections every 15,000 miles, compared to the Metro that has its first service at 600 miles too, 
but its oil changes and valve inspections are recommended every 4,000 miles. Now, is that a big deal for everyone? No, but it's something to keep in mind if you're the type of person that wants to follow the maintenance schedule to the T because the maintenance cost for each of these models is going to be different. Now, it's 2022, so of course it has an electric starter, but it also has a backup kickstart, something that used to be a standard feature on almost everything, but has been disappearing over the years. At least with Honda's ATVs, when they pulled the backup starter off, you could buy it as an accessory, but that's not the case on these. You either get it or you don't, and thankfully, you do on the Ruckus, so you do have a backup just in case your battery does die. Now, when it comes to the transmission to propel this scooter, Honda uses a V-Matic CVT setup that is fully automatic. You just twist the throttle and go. Unlike the DCT and HFT automatic transmissions from Honda, you don't have to worry about finding neutral and drive or different modes. With the Ruckus, you just press the start button and do nothing but twist the throttle to go, and then you have your front brake lever on the right side of the handlebar and your rear brake on the left side. And when it comes to brakes, you have a single 95 millimeter mechanical drum up front and in the rear with a parking brake that's operated by the tiny lever by your rear brake lever. Then we have the wheels and tires, which are one of the most distinguishable features from the Ruckus over the years. It's rolling on Kenda K761 dual sport tires that are rated at 30% dirt and 70% road wrapped around 10 inch wheels with a 12090 up front and a slightly wider 13090 in the back. Basically reminding you that with the rugged styling Honda was going after when designing this, that you can take it off road if need be. Now can you hit your local motocross track with it? Nah, I'd hold off on that a bit longer unless you're going to sink a ton of money into it but for light trail duty and a few shenanigans here and there, it'll definitely get the job done. Now, thankfully, tires for these are crazy cheap, so you can really play around with different setups. And I've got a link below to my Amazon store with some of those different options and all kinds of different ruckus parts and accessories you can flip through. And next up is the chassis and suspension. The ruckus has a two-piece die-cast aluminum front frame with a steel upper rear frame. It has a pretty basic non-adjustable fork up front that provides you a whopping 1.93 inches of travel. And if that scares you, thankfully you have a ton of aftermarket options to modify the suspension. You just have to crack the wallet open. And out back, you have a single-sided aluminum swing arm with a single shock that pulls in 2.6 inches of travel. And now let's talk a little bit about storage, as that's usually a pretty important topic when it comes to scooters. Now, when it comes to the Ruckus, you have no storage. What? None. Well, you kind of have a little bit. And when I say a little, I mean it. That's what she said. <laughs> the only place you have to stash anything is under the seat, and you'll need a screwdriver to get in there to remove your owner's manual, so you can then put something else in there. Thankfully, there are aftermarket companies, though, ready and willing to take your money as there are some options out there. You have storage options that fit under the seat, up front, and saddlebags, just to name a few. I am kind of surprised that we're pretty much 20 years into this model's lifespan, and Honda doesn't really have any OEM accessories for you to choose from, like almost all of the other models in Honda's lineup. Now, when it comes to your gauges and display, let's be honest. The ruckus is a little lacking. You have a small analog speedometer with a few dummy lights for low fuel, high beams, turn signals, and then your odometer, and that's pretty much it. And next up, we'll start the ruckus up and show you what it sounds like.
And that's the 2022 Honda Ruckus. You know, I may give Honda a hard time every now and then on models like this that haven't been changed in a while, but this thing sells and for good reason. It's relatively affordable. If you can't swing the $27.99 when new, then you can find them on the used market since they've been in production for almost 20 years. And it's pretty unisex compared to most scooters, so a guy or a girl can hop on this and be comfortable with how other people look at them. And if you drop it, there's not a ton of plastic to damage, like almost every other scooter out there on the market, and your turn signals are rubber, so they bend and won't break when you drop it. Needless to say, the Ruckus can take more of a beating than some other models out there, and you'll have a blast while doing it. And if you really want to go down a wormhole, look into the aftermarket world for these things. It is absolutely insane at what some of these guys are turning a stock Ruckus into. Plus, if you're not happy with the 35 to 40 mile an hour top speed, again, the aftermarket world has you covered. And if you're not familiar with the ruckus scene, just Google custom ruckus and you'll be able to browse for hours. But what do you guys think about it? Now that it's been almost 20 years without any significant changes, what would you like to see Honda change on it besides different color options? And that'll do it for this video, guys. Thanks again for watching and for all of the continued support lately. I really appreciate it. You guys have been killing it, and I cannot say thank you enough. But we'll see you in the next one.